What's up, everybody? <laughs> Yay! Change it up this week. <laughs> How's everyone doing? Thanks for tuning in once again. Um, I'm very excited for a couple reasons about this episode. First off, it is our seventh episode, and I was told <gasps> I when we started uh, this podcast that the average number of podcasts that people make it to is seven before they crash and burn and, <laughs> and die. <laughs> So we made it so far. Well, actually, we haven't made it to eight. So like we've made it to seven, which uh, makes me almost a little nervous because I'm very excited about this podcast. I'm also, quite honestly, a, a little nervous about it because, um, you know, of what we're going to talk about. I, I'm very interested in this topic. And, you know, I'm thankful that my audience um, seems incredibly diverse. Um, I, I recognize that you know, obviously a lot of my audience is predominantly women, which is great. Um, yeah. Predominantly Bachelor fans and Bachelor Nation is very diverse in terms of um, their beliefs and where they come from. Um, and so, like I talked about uh, on an earlier podcast, uh, you know, the way my brain works, I, I like to consider the other points of view, the other side. Um, I like uh, talking about uh, topics that uh, sometimes are difficult to talk about. Um, and I think that's, you know, my goal of today's, today's podcast. Um, before we get into that, I just want to, again, say thank you for everyone's comments. Um, quite honestly, though, uh, your rankings on iTunes have slowed down. <laughs> so if you guys, who's li if people are listening on iTunes, could just go give us five stars. After you're done listening to this, it would be greatly appreciated. Also, you can watch this on, on YouTube and, and all other platforms. So just a quick plug that way. But today, um, I have my good friend Katie Ward uh, with us today. And Katie is an, a writer, an activist, um, an actor. Uh, she's also a feminist who has um, a very popular podcast. I want to make sure I get it right. The Enthusiasm Enthusiast. Um, enthusiasm. It, you were so close. Enthusiasm, enthusiasm. <laughs> yes. I, I picked it up, I read it, and still got it wrong. No. I'm, I'm pretty sorry. sure I might be dyslexic. <laughs> I'm not kidding. I thought it could be an interesting conversation just to have about what it really means about feminism and dating and how can someone like me, the straight white guy, um, become more educated. These are very, you know, kind of controversial topics, sure, and I don't want to get into that, but just the general idea of feminism. Mm -hmm. um, you know, what is that? And, and is it a, a less of a, is it a more safe word or common <laughs> idea than, than a lot of people think? Yeah. I mean, I think when it comes to dating, if your safe word is feminism, that's a great uh, safe word to use. Just <laughs> yeah. I don't know. But like, it's funny. You say the word feminist or you like Google it and you're, you, right. you find some like. Wait, Nick, is that your safe word? What? Feminism? Oh my gosh, that would be brilliant. Oh, Nick. No, I just mean like, I honestly, if I was going around like on my social, be like, I'm a feminist. I would, I would like, I don't, can I say it? I don't know. Yes. Like, is that cool? Yes. Like I'm, was very proud of like how I was raised and how I was taught to respect women. But like, you know, it was more when the, uh, like a Aziz Ansari story yeah. came out. Um, and that was a, to me, a fascinating article um, because it, it was a lot of gray. You know, yeah. I mean, you read first, it was like at the tail end of all, like every day someone, you know, and then, you know, there was the obvious people who were like, wow, he's, that's a terrible human being. That's, there's no gray area in terms of like what they were accused of in terms of, and if that's right or wrong, it's clearly wrong. And then the Aziz star, you're reading it and you're thinking as a guy, you're just like, well, yeah, I mean, it sounds weird. You know, it seems creepy, but at the same time, like, I don't, like, you ask yourself questions in terms of, well, like, he, it seems like he had consent, you know, kind of thing. And right. it was just like, man, like, what if it, it left a lot of open for interpretation? It was my, I guess, my point. Yeah. In terms I think of, women have those moments, too, though. Like, I think when oh, I read absolutely. the Aziz story, I was like, huh, like... I've definitely been there and I kind of felt for him too. Like it felt, I think women took inventory too yes. in a lot of situations. Like I, I feel for you, I feel for men, I felt for women during that time. Like I, I remember thinking last year, like, huh, there are a lot of really shitty guys out there, but 
we've had those moments too. And the Aziz story didn't make me think Aziz was a shitty guy. It made me think back on the times where it was gray for all of us, right? Yeah. I mean, I think I think the Aziz thing, uh, I think women absolutely have been in, in uh, dates and moments where we did not feel empowered to say no. And I think also... So I think. What do you mean by that? And because that's bringing an um, interesting point. Because when I when I when that Aziz story came out, here was one of my biggest takeaways. Um, it was there was a lot of gray area, and yes, then I you know yeah. I have some friends who are, you know, self proclaimed feminists who are writers and they're in journalism, and they wrote some pieces that I was just I I, I guess was kind of uncomfortable with. I had some questions, you know, because a lot of my feminist friends talk about. Um, and being empowered and being a strong woman, speaking up, having mm-hmm. a voice. Great. I'm, I'm, I'm supportive of all that. And yet then I read this article about how um, I didn't feel like I could say something. Right. I felt like I was. And again, as a guy, I'm thinking, what do you mean? Like, wh- why not? Like, right. I would, you know, is that who's, who, is that my fault? Is that a Z's fault? It was just like, why didn't you say something in these moments? And this one article that she, she wrote about how the, and she gave examples of these interactions with men mm-hmm. dating, you know, you'll go, she, you know, we go on a date, you invite up to their house. And next thing you know, like he, the guy goes in the bathroom, walks out naked, like ready to like hook up and like, she was very uncomfortable. And I'm thinking, why didn't she be like, go put your clothes back on, mm-hmm. you know? And it's just kind of like, what, who is, who is that the guy's fault? Is that the, who, why right. aren't we having more conversation? Like, cause right. my biggest takeaway from the Aziz Ansari story was, why aren't we talking more about sex? Why aren't we talking more about like, what is expected of men in the dating arena. If, if it's not okay, if you're, if, if us men are making women feel uncomfortable and like kind of like exuding our masculinity on them in the situations, why aren't you guys letting us know in the moment? Be right. like, that's not cool, dude. Right. You know, as well, opposed see, to doing it. See, that's the and then after the, after that's the fact the being like, yeah. well, I felt uncomfortable. And I'm just like, if that were me, if I would, I would feel terrible. We have generations of women who have been told that they're not even allowed to talk about it that they're only allowed to talk about it in the privacy of like their girl group and their girlfriends. So I definitely was never taught that it's okay for me. I mean, like I will, I will post this podcast and I'll be like, mom and dad, please don't listen. I know you want to support me, but I, why? Because I was not raised to talk about sex at all. Either was I, but I take an opposite approach to my parents. I'm like, yeah, Deal with it. You're a guy right. though. But you're Why? a guy. Because- if, It's an interesting, I don't like that. Well, I've never because, even thought about see, this that. This is a conversation. Inter- right. right. This yeah. is because of slut shaming, right? So slut shaming is a whole thing that I didn't even know until five or six years ago was something you weren't supposed to do. That it was wrong to make women feel bad about sex. I was raised that you absolutely make women feel wrong. So here's it. a question, not yeah. to like get into it or seeking, val- like you, you watch The Bachelor. Yes. Did you watch- it, in real time when I called out Andy for having sex with me. I did. And I was fascinated about by that. I mean, ultimately I regret doing it because she got a lot of flack for it. And I felt like uh-huh. I caused stress on her and her relationship at the time. Yeah. Uh, I, taking that away, I thought it was interesting because I got both praise and criticism from both conservatives and from people who are considered feminist on both sides of the aisle. Also, you can be a conservative feminist. That does exist. Yeah, I'm but, curious. But, but yes. Yes, but yeah. so to I, what was your, I mean, quite honest, what was your okay. honest reaction to that time, moment? In real time, in real time, I was, I was frustrated with you. Okay, why? Because I felt like, um, I felt like you were wanting to have a private converse, uh, that that was private between the two of you. But what I understood after the fact- Okay, but just why? When okay, we just got done talking about, I was raised to talk about things in private, right. but maybe that sh- they shouldn't be as private. So that's, that's my question. That's what I'm curious about. Because like, I it's- didn't feel like Andy had, um, I didn't feel like you guys had an understanding that we're gonna talk about this publicly. Oh, we definitely didn't, for sure. So. I was frustrated with you that I didn't feel like she was getting a say in how her sex life 
was being discussed. Would it have been different if the roles were reversed? If Andy had called Nick out? Yeah. No, no, I don't think it would have been different. I think I would have been. Not for you, but in general. Um, I think in general, absolutely, it would have, the the conversation around it would have been different. For Just for me, I just felt like, oh, why is that coming up now? Now, what I saw later, this is why it's mm-hmm. important, is that you were not, fr- from what you said, is you were not trying to like put her on blast. You were actually asking the question. This is like, I just... That was the only opportunity I had to question right. that I kept asking myself for two months right. after I got Can done. Can you remind everyone what the question was? Well, I asked Andy why we hooked up. Like if she, why, because wasn't like, it, she, why did you make love make, to me? Sure. Make love. Like, <laughs> I think everyone like, I don't like bringing it up. I wish it would go well, away. But for up. the time, yeah, but it's an interesting point of view yeah. in this conversation. And in, in the moment, it was more. Because it was hard to tell. It was more if you like were sincere or not. It was more like she was just like I, I, you know, I didn't. She, you know, Chris Harrison asked her a question if she ever like loved me, and she's like, nah. And I was just like, well, shit. If you felt that way about me, right. knowing how I felt about you, why? Like again, like I, I, we talk about fuck boys and we talk about dating, and a lot of times. I'll like, even when I do my questions with Nick, it's like, I felt used. I felt let on. I felt like he, all he wanted from me was sex. And that's like a common accepted thing from women to feel that way. Were you feeling used? In that moment? Yeah. Well, again, I was basing this off. I thought Andy in the moment had real feelings for me. And why I agree about it is because I don't want to say it wasn't necessarily vindictive, but when I'm on stage and she's just like, yeah, I didn't really, you know, I didn't, I didn't really love him. I'm like, you knew exactly, I mean, I literally, like, before we hooked up was like, I love you. And I was very sincere about it. Yeah. And I'm hearing that I didn't feel that way for you. And in that moment, we hooked up and would, to me, as the guy, validated our right. relationship. Were you trying and then, to hurt her when you said that? No, I was honestly just wanted to know the answer. So I think that's, I think that's the thing. So in the moment, it came off that you were trying to hurt or embarrass her. And now having a a longer arc of seeing what your actual personality is and who you actually are as a person, it's like, no, actually Nick just talks really frankly about sex and it wouldn't occur to him that it might be hurtful to her. I mean, it's certainly in the, well, that's, I mean, like I'm not that inept to not realize it could have hurt her. I think I was just caught up in the moment of of emotion right Right. there. I mean, and again, my whole point of bringing it up is because I still find it interesting, again, that double standard of, of, of like the perception of men you know, again, in that moment, I felt, I don't want to say I felt used, but I felt like led on by the fact that we hooked up right. and she knew how I felt. And if it's the revolt, revolt, the roles are reversed, you know, we're called fuck boys all the time for like, listen, I just want to hook up, you know? Yeah. And if a girl has feelings, it just seems to be this weird thing. Right. And, and talking about feminism or talking about, but like, we're just not discussing sex and dating. And there seems to be surprisingly in 2018, this huge disconnect when it comes to like yeah. dating and sex and what's okay. Rochelle, you seem like- Well, I just want, had a comment about the Aziz thing. It's like, there's also something to take into account. Like women, we have to think about safety and we're in a very vulnerable position when you're alone with yes. a man. And I'll be honest, I've said things and the guy's gotten mad. Like if I'm like not feeling it what do you all mean? of a sudden. Do you, sometimes, are you willing to give examples? Well, they they just like, they if- if you f- if you stop things when they seem like they're going because you feel weird about anything, yeah. I've multiple times men have gotten angry at me, and honestly, That's it's very uncomfortable and it's scary. And it's how really how scary. are you going to leave? How are you going to get home? Like, I don't Start know. Sometimes calculations. Yes, you mm-hmm. calculate, and sometimes you're like, maybe it's just easier. I'm just going to get through this, and yeah. then like never see yeah. this so, person again. It's so and interesting. So, so to that point, also. Um, I think something that's really important to remember in these situations is that usually if you're on a date or if you're hooking up or whatever, you like the person Mm -hmm. and you want them to like you. And you can go into a date being like, I'm not going to sleep with him. I'm not going to sleep with him. So can I interject as a follow up? Yes. Is that that's kind of the other side of the argument. And I will joke, and even with my female friends where after the Aziz Ansari story came out, if like I go on a date and maybe a second date with the girl and for whatever, at some point in the date, if she's like, 
we have dinner, we have drinks. And there's kind of that like, what do we do next moment? Right. And she's like, well, well, do you want to go back to your place or have, come back to my place and have a drink? And before we go home, out of nowhere, just so you know, we're not having sex. Right. You know, playfully, whatever. And I kind of joke with even some of my female friends and I'm thinking, all I know right now is the only one who brought up sex is her, right? And I'm thinking, someone's thinking about sex. Now, I'm not like assuming whatever. And it's like this joke. And there have been many times on a date where the girl who's like playfully, just so you know, we're not gonna have sex tonight. Well, we end up having sex. Now, I read this Aziz Ansari story and I think about that situation and being like, wait a second. If a girl has told me at some point that even jokingly, just, just you know, I'm not hooking up with you tonight. And we end up hooking up at some point, that I, should I at this point be like, well, you told me in the, at, at, early in the date we're not having sex. And no matter what you said or did or happened afterwards, even though you made it very clear, like, hey, do you have a condom? Like, I, I, get, get, I, got, you know, I felt uncomfortable reading that. And I'm just curious is like hearing you talk about it in yeah. terms of like, I, I'll be honest, like I don't necessarily, f I always was raised to be respectful to women. So like, to get mad at a, a girl who doesn't want to hook up, I would like that would I would never think to do that. It's surprising to me that women. It's very common. It's it's, it's common. I think. And so what's right or what's right or wrong for me? Should I what, should I not be doing well, here's that? Here's what like, I would say. I would say first of all, um, like we we like the guy. We want the guy to want us. We want him to like us. Sometimes you can feel it's like going off the rails, and like maybe he's losing interest, or maybe it's not working. And so there is a time. There's a, a talk in your head that's like, well, I really want him to like me. Okay. Okay. Well, yeah, I can get into it. I can do it. Like that makes me feel terrible. Like, right. But, so now but I'm thinking back all the times I've been on a, like a date with a girl. She's just like, no, we're not, I'm not so hooking up with you tonight. What if you say, and then we do. And it's just like, well, what did I right. somehow voodoo you into having sex with me? But what if you say in that moment, Hey, you said earlier that we, you didn't want to have sex tonight. And it's kind of feeling like you're changing. And I just want to check in with you. Like, are you okay? Is I'll it be honest. I've never done that. Right. Because you didn't know it was an option. Right? I love when guys do that. When they're just it's very, I really like when they're just very clearly ask. It's like, makes oh, it very. I mean, again, I'm not like, but like there have been times where we will start making out and it will get hot and heavy, so to speak. And then she'll stop or say something like, do you have a condom? Or right. like, let's go in the bedroom. And it's like, okay. You know, and like, I'm, I feel like I check in non-verbally, right. you know, right, but like right. I've never stopped and said time out. I just want to be clear. <laughs> right. When we ordered dessert, you were you were like, hey, we're not having sex. Right. And you just asked me if I have a condom. So like, do you, are you, sh you know, like, can you please sign here? Because like, I, I, I don't. I don't want anyone to have sex with me unless they really want to have sex with me. Right. I don't. I don't. Like, I'm not interested in some girl putting out because she, she's trying to get me to like her. And I to don't, be clear, no one's assuming that you're doing anything no, like no, here. No, no but, but I hear these stories yes. and I, I I feel like I, as a guy, I'm taking for granted the situations that women often find themselves in. I think in. every girl has had a story that may, or, or a moment that made them feel incredibly uncomfortable where they either felt like they had to do something or didn't do something and felt really bad or shitty about themselves. So I had, like, I remember this guy, I was like, I had a date with this doctor and like, we went back to my apartment and we were talking and I basically said to him, I'm not going to have sex with you. And he all but shoved me out of the way and said, what the fuck am I doing up here? Are you serious? Yes. Who are these people? Awful. Like, remember when all this Me Too This happened a lot, Rochelle? Yeah. You're single, you're out there the dating? Yeah. <laughs> Fuck. Yeah. So this is why this is why you ask, like, why are all why is all this stuff happening? It's because women have had very mixed, uncomfortable, complicated relationships with sex, dating, and relationships, and because it's been very secretive for us. Yes. Right? Have I always considered myself a feminist since I was a wee little girl? Yes. The definition of that changes, and it also doesn't change. Um, you know, what I would do today, I'm a married lady now, so it's different. But if I were in the single world today, my expectations would be so different. And my understanding of it would be so different from when I was 23 and just begging for a guy to like me and, and not having the understanding of, wow, if I'm just more of my confident self, like I always felt confident enough mm -hmm. to be the only woman on a stage performing, holding my own with the guys. And 
that level of my feminism, like achievement unlocked. But when we talked about in the bedroom, oh my gosh, uh, do I, how do I look? How do I feel? Do I know what I'm doing? It, does he like this? All that sort of stuff. That was not part of my education in feminism. It just wasn't. Mm-hmm. And so it's, a, it, there's, there are often these like dichotomies of, you know, you're just not fully integrated into yourself yet. You know? Sure. I mean, so another argument, not the argument, but a side of it as the the guy like asking questions and like the Aziz Ansari story comes out where I remembered a time um, dating this girl and it was early on and like we had been on a few dates and, you know, getting hot and heavy. There's that kind of start making out. And again, she never, she never, she didn't say necessarily we're not having sex, but it was like a lot of starting and stopping with the making out. And it was very kind of high schoolish. Like it was fun in that kind of that first time you really start to get physical. Um, and there was a lot of moments of like, we would progress and then she'd kind of like pull my hand away, you know, this kind of yin and yang. Mm-hmm. And then it kind of looked at me, we kept it going. And then it got to the point one time she's like, looked at me and she's like, no. And I was like, no problem. Like, cool. And then she literally goes, no, I'm, I'm just kidding. Keep huh. like, there was this whole, like, I, she was kind of like, she liked the whole, like almost feel that, I mean, it was, and I was at that point, I was literally uncomfortable. I mean, like, fuck man, I don't <laughs> like, this is hot, but like, I'm like, I, what do you want, man? Like, I don't like, I was, you know, with this attempt of like, not right. like, for, and you're allowed to ask. Yeah. You're but, allowed to say but the, that. I will say there's an art. To put on the guy there's an too. Like, I, girls But I hear like an argument even from women or, saying yeah. they like that the excitement of feeling wanted kind of, and not even wanted, but almost kind of like this nervous energy of uh, is it okay? Yeah, like the taboo of ness of it, and it's, it's just a like a lot of pressure for guys. I'm right just now. like it's fuck, man. Like you know, that's as hot. But like the last thing I want is to leave and like get a text like the Aziz like. I'll be honest, I felt uncomfortable. I felt yeah. like you, yeah. you know, and f- I mean, fuck. Yeah, I'm just like. I remember saying to Nick a couple weeks ago, or maybe it was a couple months ago when he was, you know, a little bit confused. And he's like, I don't know, you know, if someone is going to do something, come after me. And I was like, I said to Nick, no, no, I, I'm not. Well, I mean, like, I for the record, I wasn't really worried about me ever. Like, I, I was. Right, con- Nick is a great guy. And this is my follow-up. I said, good guys don't go down. I said, we're not, no one's coming after the good guy right now, in all honesty. I said, you're not doing anything wrong, but it is confusing my for point guys of this, right now. It, was, it wasn't about worried about, uh, am I the good guy or the bad guy? It was more like, I like this, we're having this conversation. It was like, I think as men, I just don't think, again, as men and women, we're having these conversations. And not. I think we're just, just a lot we're of guys who yeah. are like, really, you have to go through that? Like, fuck. Like I never knew. Like I, we were talking before the show, Katie and I, and I was, I was just like, well, it, I've had my ass pinched more than like, it would not be an exaggeration to say that throughout my life, long before I was ever on TV, growing up in Milwaukee, that I've had my ass pinched at a bar at least 200 times. Not an exaggeration. I'm not, <laughs> so I'm bonkers. not it's just crazy. like, crazy. have you guys ever pinched someone's ass? Happened not- not anyone. All the time. I didn't Ten know times a night from like a by, by one with. o'clock yeah. in the morning, drunk girl in Milwaukee at a bar <gasps> sees me, thinks I'm cute, and instead of like saying something to me, pinches my ass. Yeah. And it's fucking annoying. Now, interestingly enough, like I, I find it annoying, but I'm not, I don't think anything more of that. I'm not like, I don't think it's okay, but I wasn't. I wasn't about to like point the finger and be like, you sexually uh, assaulted me or anything like that. And I guess I just kind of dismissed it. And it was an interesting point that you mentioned to me when I asked you that question is like, yeah, but when you leave the bar, you're not like checking to see where that girl is and if Mm -hmm. she's going to follow you to her car right? Mm -hmm. and making sure that you are with friends so that you don't walk. And I was just like, fuck, I never... I never right. thought you of that. You didn't hold your hand over your drink all night to make sure nobody put anything. Yeah, in I'd have yeah. never had that thought. And I, yeah. I like I'm aware, like I've sort of heard of roofing and the date rape drug, but sure that happens. I, but I honestly think a lot of people think those are like these exception cases. And in terms of just take going on a date with a, a woman and um, making sure she doesn't feel pressure to have right. sex mm-hmm. is like. I read that article. I'm like, what am I do-? Again, it wasn't like trying to figure out if someone's going to come after him or am I a good guy or a bad guy? But like, are, what are the areas of gray that I'm not doing? I could do a better job. Right. In? I don't think it's like you have to stop everything and make them sign on the dotted line. I think 
just checking in and asking, it's like really easy, really quick. And I really appreciate it. Yeah. And it's hot. I think that's the other thing that um, is really worth discussing is that it is hot for a man to check in and be like, do you like this? Does this feel good? Do you want this? I'm, I'm, I'm all about that. I'm very communicative. But ironically enough, Andy wrote a book. <laughs> all right. <laughs> and in that book, I, 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 I never, I book. never read it, but she, I did. <laughs> you did. <laughs> she tells a story and that it's technically true, but in the context of when she tells it, but I basically in the fantasy suite asked Andy, here's how I asked it. I asked if, if you were to have sex four times, how many times would you rather fuck or make love? Oh, okay. It was more like, you know, kind of like, are you, do Wait. you want to be romantic all the time? Or do you want to like, it was more like- Wait, why four? Just- I don't know. I just <laughs> made it up. But like, it was like getting a, of average, you know? It was like, it wasn't just like, because the answer is like, yeah, I, I'm a, I like to do both. I like to have sure. crazy mm-hmm. fun does. sex. Yeah. And I like to have yeah. those moments of like, we're really connecting. And I was curious of like, so Andy out of 10 times. Him out then. And she he said it was the, the most awkward dating experience, like of like, it, and first of all, I thought she was at that moment, maybe trying to sell a book and kind of. But isn't that the same oh, thing you right, did right, to right. Andy then? If she wrote about it in the book, then she, it's the same thing you did to her, right? Sure. I mean, whatever. I don't. Did she contact you before the book came out? Fuck no. Oh, oh so that's so the yeah, same thing. So, okay, all right. She, that's, but that's retaliatory then. That's, whatever. I'm not trying to call out Andy here oh, no, or I'm just, whatever. I'm just, I'm just actually curious about, um, it seems like right. well, here I am honestly trying to be like, right. I don't, like, what are you into? Like, what, like, yeah. do you want to like rough it up a little bit or and once in a while? Right. Or do you always want to like passionately look into each other's eyes and right. make sweet, yeah. sweet love? Right. What are you into? Right. Right. And right. I got called out for being like, well, did she respond? Fu-. What What do you mean? Did she, did she answer? Uh, she said, I, uh, <laughs> She, I remember though, she like, it was, although it was, yeah. I mean, she kind of was like surprised by my question. I don't know if it was like, you know, maybe the Southern Belle from Atlanta. I don't know, but. She's like, oh my smart. Yeah, oh, my, oh my goodness. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, I, I like to, I mean, I do find it surprising to be honest when I've, I sometimes, if I like to have these conversations, whether it's the first time I, I, I mess, we, we connect with someone, they'll ask questions like, well, what do you like? Yeah. Like what I've learned that through my <laughs> expensive dating history that like w- women have a, a, a array of different preferences to us, you know, like, sure. you know, like. That's why his safe word is feminism, yes. by the way. I don't even know what I've said so far. I'm, I'm really nervous about this <laughs> Nick podcast. Is slowly sinking down on his chair. Like if you see him, he's like lower. It's like, oh, you know, behind the chair by the uh, end of the podcast. <laughs> Nick? Well, it's been fun, guys. Seven episodes in. <laughs> guys, we I just want to say, first of all, you're doing great. I'm uh, here to say you're doing great. great. <laughs> also, the point of, of of feminism is not to exclude people and like call like call people out. The point is to bring people into the fold, right? That, that, that's the point. Like we want more people on the team, mm-hmm. not less. So to the butt pinching, <laughs> first of all, that's totally inappropriate. Yeah. It's not okay. Thank you. It is not okay for someone to touch your ass without your consent. Like that is not okay. It is also okay. It's not yeah, okay. Uh, Andy is saying it in the her. I, I guess that's her second book. I don't know if that no, was. I her think it's her first. first. Okay. It's the best. So, that's a New York Times. Good for her. Yeah. Um, so that's not okay. I want to. I just want to affirm that for you. Secondly, there's a whole lived experience that happens for women, and I will specify cisgender women, that I can speak to. Other people have other experiences. But I can say that to you that the first time that um, someone was inappropriate with me was when I was four years old. Okay. Um, and then after that, and that was, uh, I, I won't get into that, but that was the first time. That doesn't include every time I was at a grocery store and an old man blew a kiss at me and it and it, that's not appropriate. Like, that's weird. It's weird for an adult man to blow a kiss at a child. Now, yeah, that I'm doesn't go on to- A stranger. Yes, a stranger. And you can feel in your body the difference when you're being, um, when someone's trying to like be cute with you and flirty with you as an adult. And why would an adult person look at a child that way? So then you can, now I can go to high school and and I've already had all these experiences that have racked up. 
So then I go to high school and I, and, and a, <laughs> a guy I went to high school with who is in the CIA now, like cornered me in the dark room at photography class. And technically I'm not, I can't tell you what he did other than he like stood his body behind me and got too close to me in an inappropriate way. And that felt bad. Then I got to college and then guys were trying to like take me from one room to the next where I was going to be alone. So what I'm, my point in all of this is most women have had most of these experiences. So by the time we get to be 25 and have our ass grabbed at a bar, it's just a totally different experience than yours. I, not, no, no, I don't doubt I it. I yeah. don't invalidate your experience because it, no, and that I'm not is looking at necessarily simple. I'm asking as a point of but reference because like, I can honestly say, like when I got my butt pinched, all it was to me was, was annoying, annoying. Right. and I yeah. like I gave it no more thought. I didn't worry about right. anything. And to hear and for the, rest the fact of that us, you guys have to like, it's hey traumatic. guys, I need. I need three, three guys to follow me did home. You see, did you see the video that came out like probably like six months ago? And it was a woman who was a, a waiter at a, a server at a bar. And that she was like doing her, you know, like going into the cash register and like typing something in. And some guy just walked by and grabbed her ass. And she literally, you could tell she did not think. She just turned and manhandled him and threw him <sighs> up against the wall. And it went viral and she went on like Good Morning America and, and all these other shows. And it's like, because I promise you, she has had that happen. Mm -hmm. That was the 26th oh, time I don't it's happened. It, yeah. so, Probably a hundredth time. Right. So why, So it would go to show that's part of why you're going to get mixed signals from women because we just don't have it all set. And sometimes, sometimes we're involved in sexual experiences that are consensual. And sometimes we're involved in sexual experiences that are not consensual, and we're still trying to navigate that. Well, we're also taught to use our sexuality as power, too. So it's a very interesting sure. thing. So I remember when all the, like, you know, powerful men using their sexual stuff last year when all the right. stuff came out. I remember having very mixed feelings about it because I thought back and I took inventory if, you know, a powerful producer had come up to me in my early 20s and mm. offered me a job, if I'd done something, would I have done it? The answer probably would have been yes. Right, so because your power dynamics Your off. power dynamic, or, you know, Bill Clinton or whatever, you know, not to get into politics, but it's a very complicated situation for women and probably men. But, you know, not, even, but not even that, because that's like the, I think the extreme, but I, in my first relationship, my first girl, my first girlfriend when I was 18, 19, uh, my, the, like the first time really hooking up with someone and she absolutely used sex is for power. Mm -hmm. It was like, I, I, I'm a horny teenager. I want to have sex all the time. And she was like, yeah. Well, if you do this, it was literally like negotiating because she just wasn't like as, you know, I was the horny teenage boy. She was like, sex is fine, but like, it's fun, but I wanted to have it more than she did. So if I gave her a massage, like it was always like a barter thing and she absolutely used it. And when the few times where maybe I was tired or something, she would then be offended if she wanted to hook up and I didn't, but right. she could say no as many times as she want. And that was totally fine. But if I was like, man, I'm just really tired. It was like, you don't want to have sex with me. It was kind of this expectation of like using sexuality. And that, and that, that was just a playful fine, but in the, in a very safe place of we're in a relationship and we have right. sex. So, but even then you could argue that she used it to get what she wanted from time to oh, time. Oh yeah, it's fuzzy. And, and as, as you know, I, at my twenties, I probably wouldn't have had the wherewithal at 35, I can say no, I can say, you know, I'm powerful. I can say what I want and when I want it. But women right. in their 20s are complicated and they don't know how to say no right. quite yet. And they don't know how to articulate what they want and when they want it. And also you know? we haven't been believed. Right. This moment in history is like, it's so pivotal. And so it's really hard to, it's really hard to talk about our experiences that maybe happened like 10, 15 years ago because- it's just a, t we're in a totally different landscape now. And the kids that like, you know, Sam's a mom, I'm a mom. My child has been raised, you know, she's eight. And she has been raised that you just don't touch people without 
talking with them first. And that's so different yeah. than everything we were uh, raised with. Well, for, I don't know. Maybe my mom was ahead of her time, but we were, it, how we, I, I, I was, you know, when I was a little boy, I had two, uh, an older sister and two younger sisters before the rest of my siblings all popped out. And <laughs> respecting our bodies and our privacy was a huge, I mean, it was and just that's a challenging huge, to do with huge so many thing that my mom was just very mindful of. Um, that was just a big deal yeah. for her and just respecting, you know, I don't know. We have to be overly, as parents, as people, overly careful not to pass along our neuroses to other people. Like, yeah. you know, not to get yeah. into this, but like any weight and body image issues I have, I can't talk about in front of my child. A hundred percent. Because yes. he hears and sees everything I do. So right. I don't get on the scale in front of him. Anything, you know, these are my own issues. But like, your mom must have been really careful about this too. Yeah. Because with 10 kids, yeah. if you guys all turned out pretty amazingly. You know, some other. Yeah. And, I mean, like, <laughs> and the fact. That you're Which one, so, Nick? Which one is not? <laughs> that you're so Me. like <laughs> down for your partner's like consent and pleasure and like all of that. Like the fact that you're so down for that. I'm so curious, like. Where did that come from? Because that does not typically come from. That surprises me, and not to give myself too much credit, because I just assume it's ego, right? It's ego in the fact that like. <laughs> You mean wanting her to have pleasure is ego? Yeah. It's more like if I were, if I'm intimate with my girlfriend or whatever, I want to think I'm really good at hook, you know, like I'm good at, <laughs> the like, thing. I enjoyed my time with Nick. <laughs> Doing you know, the like, damn thing. So like, I can, whatever, I can take care of myself if things don't finish, mm -hmm. but like I would prefer to do that and have her leave being like, I can barely walk. This is amazing. Or, or I really enjoyed myself. I'm coming back for more as opposed to like I get off and I like she does all the things that she thinks I enjoy. I finish and she leaves being like, that was a very unsatisfied experience. Right. Mm -hmm. like, and, I I'm like I, and then so I just to like, like to, I just, I just like, it's kind of ego where I want, like right. I want someone to like, you know, and I want to be sensitive and I want to, and I want her to feel safe and I want her, you know, right. and there's an exciting, you know, obviously we push the limits sometimes within like the confines of hopefully there's a mutual understanding because there's like that, maybe that role playing when I say push the limits of, of things like that. But I just, I've always thought that way. I've always been, I, you know, here's, I'll tell a story. <laughs> Here's where it maybe comes from. I like how he just whined himself. I'm a little, oh my God. This kind of came to me. I'm a little nervous about this story. You might cut it out. <sighs> when I was in high school, I, I had one of my first girlfriends. And it was like one of the first girlfriends. It was before I was a virgin still, but we were we were touching privates, sure. right? Uh, we were going to third base a lot. Uh, is that okay to say? I was like, I don't know. Uh, Everybody's leaving their chairs in this podcast. Uh, <laughs> Michelle and this is, the room. this is when we're like, I don't know how the kids are doing it today, but like, it was a lot of like, you know, putting our hands down each other's pants and going up shirts and a lot of sure. that. And our clothes are half on, half off. And we're, and we would like, we didn't know really what we were doing. So we would just do this forever. Like, and by like 45 minutes of like <laughs> me putting my hands down her pants. Right. <laughs> and so her doing the same to me and right. you're just kind of like, I don't know, being probably not really thinking about how to do it. You're just doing it for the sake of not being crude. <laughs> and I'll never forget that one of her friends came up to me like in gym class. Oh, no. And she was like, hey, Nick. I was like, what's up? Oh, no. And she's like, um, and I, I won't use her name. I'm making up the same. She's like, Sue. Her name wasn't Sue. But like, so you know when you're like messing around with Sue oh, and no. you're, and you're, uh, I mean, you're fingering her, like, I don't, whatever. Like, I don't know how else to say it. And, and you're just like really cranking away. And I'm like, yeah, she doesn't like that. And I'm like, really? And I remember her telling me this, like how much she hated basically me putting my hands on her pants and just like, I don't know, like. Trying to figure it out. Trying to figure it out. And I remember being like a mortified. As it, but, as it, but immediately being like, well, what does she like? What can I, how, all right, fine. Right. Thanks for letting me know. Thanks for doing, like she, she didn't call me out. She was like, she literally, I mean, I think about it, like the maturity of her friend to just pull me aside <laughs> right. and being like. That's a good friend. Hey, Aww. listen, like she, I'm not trying to embarrass you, but like, stop doing that. You're destroying her. <laughs> and I was like, I was like, well, first of all, oh, I feel dirty. Right. Second of all, like, well, what? And she literally taught me like yeah. what to do. And it, 
Cha- and it changed everything. And I remember always thinking about that moment of asking questions. In that moment, I felt what it was like. I realized that for a, a month when we were a couple of 20 teenagers doing this, she hated it. Aww. You know, so like all these moments, I'm, I'm playing back. Well, we kind of messed around then. And we messed around that. And for 45 minutes, she's just like... I think this is fine, you know, like, <laughs> and I felt bad, you know, like I felt. And so all I wanted was to never a be in that position, never put someone else in that position. Right. So at that moment, I was just like, I'm just going to ask, you know, also, it's a lot, save a lot of time to be like, well, do you like this or do you like that? And I've realized again, like I said this earlier, when it comes to dating and I'm older now and I've had relationships with different women and I've dated and, and uh, women all like source of different things just because one woman likes this right. or, and, and guys too. And so I just say to myself a lot of time, be like, well, what are you into? What do you like? Right. How can I make your experience enjoyable? And also when you're yeah. first figuring it out, girls are not taught to, to, to masturbate or to teach themselves what they like. So like, whereas, you know, you guys are pretty like, I have so much anxiety. No, right guys now. learn things from porn, and right. that's the exactly. Oh, it's another great yeah. point. Yes. yes, I I'd never thought about this, but one of my feminist friends, she's like, "Well, do you know, like, all porn is is like it, how to get guys off?" Yeah, and right. I like I never thought about that. I never thought about like we're all watching porn, men and women. I mean, we're all watching porn, right? Like, yeah, <laughs> I've watched porn. I haven't um, watched it and lately, like, but there when is you, feminist when you porn. watch it. We watch, you watch it is like, it is it's like if, if guys are learning how to have sex yeah. by watching porn, it makes sense why yes. so many yes. men out there yes. who never like maybe had the friend in high school to be like, hey, Sue's not into this. And I was like, oh, okay, well, how? <laughs> and it's probably why guys are, you know, not to like take the blame off of, of guys, but that is I never thought about that. Right. And mm-hmm. you were like, you were telling me how there's feminist porn. There is feminist mm-hmm. porn. I haven't seen it. So I, I, uh, and, uh, I know it exists, and in fact, uh, is my, it called feminist? And it's called feminist porn. Yeah, like I think you can Google mm-hmm. feminist porn. I feel like they should, from up. a marketing standpoint, I feel like they should change the name to what? Well, how to teach a guy to be good at sex? Maybe I don't know. Like, <laughs> but, well, listen, but, I, I'm, I'm here saying like feminist that. isn't a bad word, and and no, whatever. It's for women, it's for women. It's not for you. Well, oh. I'm uh, fine, but would it, I don't know. For all the women who are like, God, every time I hook up with this guy, he's just like. Suck my dick, you know, like it was very like, you know, like you watch a porn. It's just like, hey, baby, we as soon as you start, and the guy's just like, you know, like right. that's uh-huh. not cool. It's not okay. It also happens all the time in porn, right? So, sure. wouldn't feminist or this porn that's not for men? I feel like it should be fucking for men. Like <laughs> they should absolutely be watching and be like, just in case you're interested in what we enjoy, right? Here you go. That's the whole like, point. The whole point is to. I'm not trying to steal it from you. I'm no, just like, no, I no, feel no, like no, women no, it's, would- it's, well, it's open to you, too. What I'm <laughs> saying is like, the point is to, to give women something that they can feel good about, get into, feel like the actors are not being taken advantage of, that, mm-hmm. that some poor girl didn't like, you know, take the train from Milwaukee and like show up to LA and now she's, you know, doing this. The point is to like <laughs> empower people to, you know, have these fantasies. Like- I will I would tell any guy out there if you want to have an understanding of media that is feminist and for women and sexy Magic Mike XXL yes. is ah. so dead on every feminist I know is like that is the fucking hottest shit ever Is this the movie? Yes. Mm-hmm. And the show. I should watch it. And the show, mm-hmm. right? They have it in Vegas now. And so like and the point of Magic Mike, if you, if you haven't seen it, I think you should I've go back and watch it. I've seen parts of the first movie. Yeah, no, no, no. Wasn't the really first for movie me, but... wasn't for us. But the second movie Interesting. is all about how they are de- they're deciding to take this like male dancer thing that's always been foist upon us as what our fantasies should be and could be and change it to what are they really. And it's usually in service to women, right? That's a great way of like, watching something that totally speaks to what women actually find hot and sexy and want. So what are, what are some of the biggest takeaways that men and women, how can we all be more accountable for uh, making feminism and sex and dating a better experience for everyone so that 
you know, again, I, I can't I can't defend the guy who says what the fuck when you're like, I don't want to have sex. I mean, that seems pretty shitty, but like how like how can we the all like I always contend that, yeah, there's a lot of shitty people out there, but there's also a lot more people who want to be the good guys and we don't always, or in women too, who want to do things the right way. And maybe we are just all a little ignorant. I mean, I know I like, I grew, you know, I've had ignorant points of view in my life and it wasn't because I just was more educated. So what can we all do? What can women do and what can men do to hold ourselves all more accountable so that we all have a better experience in the dating world and we're all, you know, more pro-feminist and equality and we're, you know, we're respecting women and, and women are respecting themselves and men are respecting themselves too. And what could we all do? I think the first thing to do is always, uh, the, the first thing that's really easy to do is take in feminist media and take in, um, you have, we have access to the whole world right now, right? Like we, we can listen to podcasts, we can go on the internet, we can watch TV shows, like take in media that is not created by someone who looks like you. So like, for example, like Insecure is a great show that centers voices of women of color from a, a feminist point of view. And they don't always get it right. Like mm -hmm. they're, 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 flawed and foibled and like it's really funny they they have great sex scenes in insecure if anybody's looking for really hot sex scenes and because it's not perfect so i think that's one thing to do is like expose yourself like if every podcast on your playlist is like three uh like white dudes that are making themselves laugh like expand your point of view so one one pushback, not even a pushback, but sometimes I sometimes get frustrated at my feminist friends, especially in the media, is I will say, because there's a, I would say the criticism against feminism or feminists is that they come across sometimes as anti-men. Oof. Yeah. Um, and I will say, like, even, I have friends who, like, I, lo they're, I, they're, I love, they're great. I like talking to them. I like having these discussions with them. I listen to their perspective and I follow them on Twitter and there are sometimes they tweet things and I'm just like, I'm like, I immediately feel as a guy who I, and I'm your friend, yeah. I feel defensive. Right. There was an article, like one of them posted it saying 2018, a bad year for men. And it had a picture of like Kevin Spacey and um, what, 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 Harvey, Weinstein. Harvey Weinstein. I'm like, really? All of men? A whole, a whole like, because like, there's a couple of shitty dudes. I'm sure there's plenty of shitty dudes, but like generalizing men. Mm -hmm. And I, I don't get why sometimes self-proclaimed feminists have that kind of talk track and that messaging, because even as a guy who wants to be supportive of women and feminism, I will read that and feel defensive. Right. Mm -hmm. I will feel like, and there have been other like tweets that it's just it comes across as very generalizing about men in general, and I don't doubt they've had shitty experiences with men, but like right. I get defensive and uncomfortable, and sometimes I wish they wouldn't have those messaging because, you know, when your example of well, seek out more. Uh, different types of mediums yeah. uh, to kind of educate yourself, I think it turns people off because it comes across as like, well, they just hate men. I'm not going to listen to them because they're just anti-men and they like, it's not about equality, it's about revenge. Mm, um, that's interesting. And I, you know, sometimes I would get frustrated with my feminist friends because it's just like, oh, like, come on. Like, I, I understand, like, but like, and I understand where you, you can't also always appeal to the masses and you have to, but like, I... I don't know. I, I sometimes get confused and frustrated because it's like I will feel like either I know you because I get you. I st I know I feel defensive and God forbid someone who doesn't know you, who is unsure about the meaning or the word feminism. And if they read that, immediately just kind of dismiss you. Right. Um, so we have so I, to remember that feminism is really good for men. It is a good thing for men. Yeah. And, and, and here's why. Because it's good for us to be in situations, like say if we're talking about having sex, like it's good for men to know that they can ask women what they want, how they want it, and that they're not considered less of a man for caring about that. Mm -hmm. So what feminism does is it says, hey, if you have feelings and like, hey, um, 
Andy's telling you that she didn't really give a shit about you or whatever, and that hurt your feelings, feminism like acknowledges it and says like, yeah, that is shitty. You get your ass grabbed in a bar. Feminism says, yeah, that's not, that's not okay. And it's not, it's not anti-man. It's giving men more options to be who they are and giving women more options to be who they are. So I love that when I, you know, go to pick up my kid at school, there are tons of dads there picking up their kids at school, Mm -hmm. which means maybe somewhere their wife is, or their partner or whoever is, you know, maybe bringing home the bacon and, and you know what I mean? So it's it's all about like options. That's the thing that generally, like I look at again, my parents, like my parents couldn't be more conservative. I teach like hardcore and you know, we'll get into, like I said, we'll get into future podcasts about, you know, uh, my parents kind of uh, educating themselves as well. And they're still very conservative. Um, but, you know, and my mom traditionally did a lot of the traditional, like, did, you know, she was a stay at home mom. So she did the laundry and cooked and yeah. whatever. But, and my dad was, you know, went to work. But like, I can't, I don't know how many, like, my dad often cooked dinner from time to time or like, did his part or helped my mom when she needed help. And my mom sometimes mowed the lawn. It wasn't like, they weren't like, this is your job and these are your roles. They generally did these things, but they were just a team. And so it wasn't like they they didn't put a lot of emphasis on it, even though most of the time they did the traditional things. They, my mom traditionally did what came across is your, um, the, the housewife, like what she would do. And, you know, right. um, and I just think that maybe that's how I learned that it wasn't like, yeah, we generally do these things, but it's not, it doesn't define us and we're not required right, to do Right, you love to it. iron. I'm a fantastic ironer and yeah. I'm very proud of it. Yeah. And I'm not ashamed to know <laughs> yeah. that. And just because someday I hope to find a wife who's willing to fold my laundry, it's not because she's a woman. It's just I fucking hate folding laundry. I also think with your ironing skills, you might find a wife who's willing to fold For that laundry. sure. Yeah. I think that's an even trade-off. Mm-hmm. And I'm not talking about gender roles when I say that. And, and laundry I, is my favorite chore because I can watch TV while I do it. I agree. And I don't want to be attacked by saying I hope to find someone who folds my laundry. No. <laughs> oh. I don't. I don't see that like th- no hey what? nick do you think one of these skype calls is someone who's willing to fold your laundry we're not doing skype. oh wait yeah what do i do we're doing it oh, we're doing it do you think this ad is someone <laughs> that was a really good segue then we don't, always, we, don't, we don't always have to have amazing segues. We can just be like, hey, guys, you know what time it is? It's time for... It's time for an ad. It's time to sell some things. <laughs> do, 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 do. Yeah. Let's talk about um, feminine products. Well, I will say I think our, our sponsor for today's episode is <laughs> Apropos. Um, Lola. What is Lola? Lola is a female-founded company offering a line of organic cotton feminine products like tampons, pads, liners, and all-natural cleaning wipes. They also uh, have a sex line of condoms, lubricant. Ooh. Listen, um, first of all, safe sex, people. I mean, if you're not lucky enough to be in a relationship and you still have needs and you hook up, I'm not saying whatever you're, you know, my parents will probably cringe. Safe consensual sex. But I feel like lube, you know, can be appropriate sometimes. Um, You know, assuming your guy can last more than a minute. Um. (laughs) It might have helped during uh, the time with Sue. Maybe yeah, that's what we, Sue needed. I think maybe Sue needed. Also, I think uh, <laughs> Sue just needed me to be a little bit more attentive to, you know, just in general. God bless her. Uh, thank you, Sue, for changing my life. <laughs> <laughs> so much anxiety. Lola is a female-founded company offering a line of organic cotton tampons, pads, liners. They now offer sex products too, as mentioned. Okay. Well, let's talk about let's talk about the lubricant. It's uh, water-based. That's good. Yeah. Uh, it's made well with aloe vera. Is that how it's pronounced? Aloe mm-hmm. vera? Um, everyone likes aloe vera. Uh, it has a mess-free dispenser. Because I'll be honest, when <laughs> I've fucked up some sheets with lube, I'll be honest. Like it just gets, ah, what am I doing here? And it's just like, you know, no, too much. <laughs> uh, it's made without irritating chemicals, which is very important mm-hmm. because uh, for guys and, and, and women, we don't want things that are going to just irritate us. It's gynecologist approved, hyperallergenic, formulated to help and maintain a healthy pH, safe to use while trying to conceive. Oh, that's oh, interesting. That's nice. That's great. That's awesome. Yeah. Here's what's really great about Lola. They d- discreetly deliver right to your door. And oh, no that's one, nice. that's while great. safe sex and lubrication is important, there is nothing more awkward than going to the grocery store and buying a tub of ice cream, lube, and condoms. It just seems like you're up to no good. So, how do you get 
Lola delivered right to your door to avoid that awkward grocery store experience. Well, you go to uh, mylola.com. That's M-Y-L-O-L-A.com. Use promo code VIAL, V-I-A-L. Again, mylola.com, promo code VIAL. Get 40% off all subscriptions with that promo code. Um, so yeah, try it out. Uh, avoid the awkwardness uh, in the dating world of uh, buying condoms and lube at the grocery store. Um, and support uh, feminine products, a uh, company by women uh, that are organic and safe. And uh, for you guys out there, um, you know. Keep some tampons Keep around. some tampons. I'm pretty sure that the listeners of this podcast are predominantly women. I, and all you women out there, thanks for listening. I Thank hope you. that uh, we get more uh, male audience. I, my goal of this podcast is to just be kind of a, a place that um, men and women can find it to be useful, educational, fun, funny. Um, but also, uh, how can we all get better at dating? Um, and to your point, if we, I think if we support feminism and, and equality, you guys out there could probably, um, get bragged about a little more often. Mm-hmm. Um, yes. and to, to your girlfriend's circle of friends, opposed to like, you know, one wants to have that Sue conversation with your friend that I had in high school that I tried to avoid. Speaking of questions, like feel free. We'd love to have more questions about, uh, in, in the future episodes about, uh, your experiences, um, men and women about maybe some awkwardness and some, some uncomfortable situations you didn't have the answers to. And, uh, maybe we can talk about it more in future episodes. I think that would be fun, interesting, and probably funny too, and hopefully helpful. Yeah. So let's get into some calls okay. and uh, we'll uh, have some fun. We have we have someone here. Uh, our first caller, what is your name? I'm Nick. This is Katie. Hey, Hi, hey. guys. I'm Allison. I'm calling from Boston. Hi, out Al- Boston. Ooh, your first Boston caller. Uh, Allison, how can we help? My question really revolves around um, how to handle insecurities on a first date. Oh. So um, a little bit of backstory on this one is I was um, dating this guy for about six dates, um, had really great, like the one potential, like probably more so than anyone I've ever online dated before. Okay. And um, unfortunately, he didn't feel the same way. So the relationship ended and I'm trying to get back out there. Okay. But I started um, this new medication and I gained a bunch of weight, about 10 pounds. So I'm really kind of trying to figure out how to handle it. Like I'm a, definitely a curvy person. So, you know, I'm always a little bit insecure about my weight anyway. Um, and I know that first impressions and like attraction on a date are important, but I'm also like a super active person. I'm interested in active people. I like to hike. So I'm trying to figure out how do I handle this? Um, you know, do I wait until I figure out the medication situation, lose the weight to get back out there? Do I just change my profile pictures? Do I bring it up on a first date if I don't look quite like my pictures or am I making way too big of a deal out of this? Sure. I mean, I don't know you. It's my first time seeing you. You look great. I mean, you don't seem, I don't mean, I don't know, 10 pounds. I don't, you know, my guess, the, my quick answer is you're probably you're making, I mean, it's important to you. So I can't say you're making too big of a deal about it, but you're probably more sensitive to it than what other people might notice. Uh, people have personal guys and, and women. I mean, let's, but let's just talk about guys. I guess we all have personal preferences in terms of what we're attracted to from a physical aspect. I have always said, interestingly enough, but if I had to choose, right, when it comes to weight, if we're just talking strictly weight here and just talk, if I, if someone said, Hey Nick, if you were dating someone, would you rather have your girlfriend be 10 pounds underweight or 10 pounds overweight? I would choose 10 pounds overweight every single time. That's again, now I'm, you know, the girl who's like maybe 10 pounds underweight because of a, a, a hyperactive, um, you know, uh, what is it, when thyroid, thyroid, right? like that's just a personal <laughs> preference. So I'm not telling a girl who's underweight to feel insecure about it, but just for your point of view, I would, I don't think that's a big deal. Um, and so I would challenge you to not be so insecure about it. If you can, I definitely wouldn't go on a date in the first two dates, like, just kind of have this confessional, just so you know, I think I'm yeah. hotter than I actually <laughs> perceive myself to be right now. Um, uh, if in terms of uh, online dating, I, sh- you, I think people in general should always post fairly recent pictures of themselves. Um, yeah. If a picture, if you, if you look distinctly different, what, regardless of what it is, hair color, glasses, weight, uh, than six months ago, then don't post a picture of yourself six months ago. 
Uh, if you look generally the same, then fine. Use a picture that reflects you online dating. I think that, that, that should be, that should happen all the time. Um, but I also, in terms of like, if you're not ready to date, don't force it too, right? So if you feel like you're so insecure about this, whether I think you should be or not, um, I think it's important for you to be confident in yourself and, and work on that before you f- go out there and, because whether you, I'm telling you, don't, don't talk it up. You don't want to project it either onto your date that you're really insecure about something because people will pick up, I, I think, on, mm-hmm. on insecurities. But I would challenge yourself, yourself to, um, to not let it bug you so much. And the, the, also there's probably a plenty of guys who are probably super into these 10 pounds that you've, um, brought along, <laughs> uh, you know, that's just, again, a personal preference, right? I don't, you know, so what men are interested in and how you feel comfortable. Like, and I've learned this with dating too, because with girlfriends I've had, like they've had fluctuated in weight. And again, small degrees, five, 10 pounds is not necessarily a lot of weight. And they preferred, they felt better at one weight and I preferred like just physically another weight. Now, ultimately how they feel most comfortable is what they should do. They shouldn't like have a certain weight because of what I care about. My point is, is that what a guy is into and how he's attracted to you might be very different than what you feel most comfortable with. So to worry about what guys are into or whether they're, you might not, you have no idea, you know, like for all you know, if you, if you pulled a hundred guys, they might all prefer this Allison to what you prefer. Ultimately it doesn't matter because it's what, what makes you most confident. So I guess what I'm saying is don't waste too much energy thinking about what guys are going to be into Go on dates when you feel confident in yourself. Don't project your insecurities if you can control it. And yeah, post most re- mo- the most recent pictures of yourself on a dating app would be my two cents. <laughs> no, that makes total sense. Um, I think the goal is always to look better in person when you show up. Yeah. So that people are pleasantly surprised. Yeah. <laughs> always well, like, oh, well, <laughs> well, you must know your angles. Like, oh, shit. <laughs> um, <laughs> can I add something? Please, yeah. Uh, so first of all... Um, Never wait for the perfect weight, the perfect uh, situation to go out and do something. Like don't don't put off your life and your love and even just mindless hooking up. Like don't put that off because you're waiting for your body to be a certain way. The other thing is um, you're going to want to attract someone to you that doesn't value you based on your weight. Like that's not the person that I think is going to go the distance with you. So it's time for you to not value yourself based on your weight. And I know we are up against so much. And I say this as someone who, uh, is, is, is carrying more weight than I normally do because of an injury. So I'm, I'm dealing with this on the regular. So I so, so, so identify with you, but we have to work really extra hard to not value ourselves that way and really value like who you are, what you're bringing to the table. Like if you are a kind, fun, empathetic, exciting, ambitious, shy, inquisitive, whatever, whoever Allison is, that is, that is what will, will make the connection for you. And the weight is really inconsequential. Yeah. And also have your pictures look like I, you. I think those are also great points. And just kind of like, <laughs> I, I was having drinks last night with some friends. It was two of my female friends and my buddy. And we, we didn't necessarily talk about weight, but we talked about dating. Because you brought up a point. We talked about effort and how sexy effort is. And the thing is like, you know, I, yes, it's important. I, I, I agree with Katie in terms of ultimately you want to date, especially a long lasting relationship. It's more than just a physical attraction in your weight. In, in, in your life through a, a long last, your, your weight's going to fluctuate. You know, especially if women start having kids or whatever, as we get older, all our metabolism slow down and things like that. But, you know, you brought up a point where like, I think, I think people, not men or women, we understand your weight's going to fluctuate, but like all I want when it comes to weight is like effort in terms of, we all recognize that we want to try to attempt to look our best within the restrictions of our lives and the things that we have to do. And so I think people like, I think when most people get frustrated about their partner, whether it's a, you know, how they're dressing, we talked with Brad last week mm-hmm. about like giving up is it's just the effort to make it to c- control what you can control. And if, you know, you have an injury, fine, you might be, you know, you're on medication. Those are all things that you might not be able to control, but like, just to know that it sounds like you, 
you are mindful of it and you want to make an effort to, to look good and because you feel good. And I think as, as we date, we appreciate that in our partners. And I think that's an okay to have that effort to say like, well, I want to look good for you. So I'm going to do my best because, you know, no one wants to be in a relationship where people are like, oh, I don't care what I look like anymore. And I just want to give up. And if I gain weight, love me, you know? So I think, I think that's okay to acknowledge in a partner that you want to have, be with someone who takes the effort mm -hmm. to, to look good for the other person, to make the effort, you know, and I, I, is that okay to, to say? Because I feel like both on, on men and women, it's not just guys right. saying this to women. You know, do, you, do, do women want to date a guy who's like, they get in a relationship and it's his sweatpants and hands down their pants and like, you know, gaining a bunch <laughs> of weight and never work and being lazy and, and, you know, no one wants that, but that's not you. You, you are mindful of it. You are... You're making the effort. And there's some things that we can't control. Like we can't control other aspects of our lives and the time that we have or the time we don't have or injuries and medication. And I just want someone who wants to make the effort. Can I also recommend that you de-emphasize the weight for yes, now? Yes, yes, It's so, I mean, as someone who has struggled with eating disorders and, and body image, can you try, since this is, I, it's impossible to say, it's, it's so hard to say to someone to, to take away the importance of weight, but unfollow all the models and follow some body positive people and de-emphasize yeah. the number and maybe go buy some makeup yes, or something that makes sure. you really happy. That's like, a great point. I'm a big fan of like when I'm feeling a little bit less positive about the way I look, I go and get myself some new makeup. You know what I mean? Something that makes me feel yeah. good about the things I can work with right, right. now because the number isn't necessarily what matters. If yes. you have 10 extra pounds on you, no one else will notice but you. Yeah. Um, I, I always get a kick out of like, you know, women talking about weight or not wanting to discuss your weight. And as a guy, I, I don't care. I don't even know the difference. It, if you're, if you tell me like you're 100, 200 pounds, I don't, whatever, you look great. I, you know, I don't, yeah. it's just literally just yeah. a number. Right. People have literally different bone densities and water right. weight and right. like, like I could well, fluctuate eight pounds in a day, but yeah. you know, and so you're like unique in that perspective, Nick, as I was listening to you, I was once broken up with because I'd gained weight. So, I mean, women do have this sort of uh, decades of sure. no, I don't, yeah. caring. I get that. Yeah. And I understand mm -hmm. where she's coming yes, from and it's for scary sure. to, to gain 10 pounds. It's terrifying. So I, I don't want to take away how scary this is to her. Oh, for yeah. sure. I'm just trying to help her de-emphasize yes. the importance of the 10 pounds, if at all possible. And you're a unique there because you don't care. And you're yeah. saying I prefer the ten pounds, which is nice for Dude, me. Dude, I don't, I don't know, I don't know. I'm curious what men think out there. I don't know if that, am I that unique? I, I would argue. I know there's a lot of guys, especially like in LA, where it's just a lot of like, you know, you know, there's a lot of people who are very weight conscious and women I know, and like they, you know, I joke when I, I, I was had this one friend. And I'm like, she talked about something about being skinny, and I said like, before I met you, I thought you were like really skinny. And we were very playful. She's like, oh my god, thank you. And like mm -hmm. a joke about like me calling her skinny. I was flat, you know, this whole thing. Mm -hmm. And I generally don't think men are necessarily into the skinny look. I think I get the impression that like women seem to be more into it than men. Again, mm -hmm. I'm speaking in generalities. People just have different preferences is ultimately the answer. But I don't know if it's, I, I don't know if I'm in the minority. I think I'm just one group of preference. I mean, maybe the best takeaway is again, like as a guy, I can't uh, relate or appreciate all the shit you <laughs> women have to deal with. <laughs> but if you're worried about what we think, Allison, yeah, don't worry don't. about it because yeah. it's not yeah. that like, we honestly, <laughs> I don't think guys <laughs> Notice that much. You certainly are way more in tune and more sensitive to it. So don't let it hold you back and try yeah. not to emphasize weight so much because uh, we don't really care that much. I can't speak for all men, but you look great. And if you want to lose 10 pounds, lose 10 pounds because it makes you feel better. But you're not, don't do it for us. You do it for yourself. Just love guess, yourself. You know? yeah. Just love yourself wherever you're at. Well, thank you guys. This was super helpful. It was all really helpful advice and it's good. It's good to hear from you guys. I appreciate it. Awesome. All right. Well, have a great day. Thanks for calling in. Bye. Thanks. Hi, Nadia. This is Nadia. <laughs> hey girl. Hey. Um, how um, can we help? Yeah. Nadia. Um, I was listening to a podcast a couple of weeks ago with Liz um, when you guys were talking about men in the workplace. Um, and I thought it was a really interesting conversation because I I'm dealing with that kind of stuff here right, right now. So um, I'm from the UK, so I live in London. Um, Super into this so voice international. right now. We're, we're, we are worldwide people. <laughs> um, all right, yeah. so you're in the UK and you're dealing with this. Yeah, yeah what, are we, what are you dealing yeah. with? 
So I um, well, I worked for like an English football company, so kind of similar to what she kind of did, but um, <laughs> worked with a lot of kind of middle-aged men and had the um, experience to try and deal with that. So um, I've always been like really, really um, self-confident and I've never seen myself as not equal to men in any way, shape or form. If I've got better experience or I have, um, you know, more knowledge than that means I'm better for the role. If a man is better or has more experience, then that is all what it is. Um, so this is the first company that I worked with that I really experienced that kind of difference between men and women. Um, I was the only female on like the senior team and we had, there was an incident anyway. So one of my bosses got fired for doing something. But after that, I got are you, told that Are I you was, willing to be specific about what happened? Just to give a point of um, reference? Yeah. So we, um, he took me away to a meeting that I was apparently supposed to go to, which I wasn't. Um, and he more or less just tried it on with me and like tried to get into a hotel room and was like messaging me about inappropriate things. Um, and he'd only been in the business about three weeks at that point. So it was really, really kind of uncomfortable. Oh my gosh. Um, so I reported it because at the end of the day, for me, I didn't want anybody else to have to go through that or like I would never let any of my team go away with him so for my image I was like I couldn't leave him in the business more or less so I reported it um and then after that I got told that I was too friendly and I was too nice and I brought it on myself um yeah exactly so it was like and realistically all I did was bought him lunch and that was why I was too friendly so um, it's really interesting, though, because I think the reason why I was called too friendly is because as a girl, like, I'm naturally a bit more friendly than they were. Yeah, that doesn't sure. mean that I'm inviting something. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, um, yeah, so it was absolutely ridiculous. Anyway, so I went through that for probably about seven months after that. I kind of experienced the backlash. Like, people wouldn't even, like, get into cars with me and stuff like that. Um Oh. And literally, it was only me that was dealing with it. And any other females that were in the business, no matter what position they were in, they were also kind of getting comments about having kids, um, about anything you can think of. And it's actually quite hilarious because I've never dealt with it before until I got into the industry where it seemed like the norm. So, so yeah, it's just, when I was listening to the podcast, it was really interesting to be like that because I've always been the person that's like, that doesn't even exist anymore. I don't see it anywhere. It doesn't happen. And then, yeah, oh, yeah girl, it happens. Well, yeah, exactly. I just want to say thank you very much for for telling the story. It takes a, a lot of guts, um, and it takes a lot of guts for you to to do what you did because I think I don't know if you have a specific question, but I just I think it's uh, you know we hear these stories and, and the gasps from the ladies in the room with me, even myself. And as much as we talk about uh, equality in the workplace, we seem to be more mindful in 2019 than we did in say 1980. It just demonstrates mm-hmm. just how much of a long way we have to go, and it still takes, you know, I don't not to a down, an act of bravery to yes. to to put yourself mm-hmm. out there or to do the right thing at the risk, unfortunately, of still. Um, of putting a target on your back, I guess is a lack of a better yeah. way of saying it. Um, and it, you know, and I think the only way to combat this is to continue to have these conversations because again, like not in any way to defend the actions of all these people or even the women, but like, I just think we're just not talking about it enough. Right. And mm-hmm. so yeah. how can we get to a place where if a guy does something as shitty as, you know, corners you at work or tries to go to your hotel room and you just do the right thing to put out there to not be the the man hating uh, liability at the workplace uh, that you're not because he did something shitty. And unfortunately, we're just mm-hmm. we're just not there yet. And probably because we're just not having these conversations um, yeah. enough and we're not talking about it enough. And so, um, you know, I'm sorry you have to go through this because it does take some guts in your part to do that. Because it was funny because when you first told the story, I was immediately wondered what the fallout was. Mm-hmm. Because I think I don't think your story, unfortunately, is unique. I think no. every woman who who uh, who does that runs the risk of having that scarlet letter, so to speak, mm-hmm. of now being kind of a corporate liability. It's like HR will like do the right thing and let the guy go, but you've also 
like now everyone's afraid of you because it's just like, and that's unfortunate. It's shitty. I don't, I don't know. I don't know if you have anything well, to Katie, add. To how that, do but. we remove the narrative that the woman was asking for it, which is basically what she's saying, right? Like that's the scary part. How, well, what is the, what happens here? Well, yeah. um, first of all, I think we continue to, uh, like, I think you're in a great position to shepherd women into more positions of power. Like the, the more that you the, the, the higher up on the ladder you go and you're aware of these things, the more you bring women with you, right? And so um, a lot of times what happened in the past in, you know, corporate situations or whatever is that there was only one spot for a woman. There was only one. And so women were kind of eating each other alive. Like the token to job them. that we're going to give one. You know, exactly, yeah. exactly. And what we know from experience now is that we are. We do better when there's more of us. We do better when we're together, and we're, we do better when we, um, you know, when we make sure that we shepherd the careers of other women. Because the more people that are at the table, the safer it's going to be for everyone. The other thing yeah. is, I I would be curious as to hear is what is the what, like what is the HR policy at your company? Is it really laid out? This is this is what we do when this happens, or is it all just like Eh, understood. Yeah, it's kind of a little bit. The thing is, though, I actually officially kind of left last week, and I'm moving to something else. I'll mention in a second, but um, it was it was all over the place, and because they didn't really care to deal with it because it was their culture. Right. It, as soon as I said something, it was a panic of how to deal with it because they didn't know, and and that was even worse. And I think the most offensive thing about the whole situation was after it happened, they didn't even bring any safeguarding for anybody else. It didn't happen again, yeah. and that's where. You know, I, I can, I pride myself on having quite a strong personality so that I can kind of deal with it. But there's so many people that would fall apart as soon as something like that happened. And yes, of course. all those people won't be the people who report it. So right. um, I couldn't work for a business like that anymore. Like that is, yeah, it's yeah. not the right well, thing. Well, hopefully, so. I mean, you probably won't even get to find out, but you, you're, pro you're, you're definitely a trailblazer yes. even for that company. Yes. And I think in years to come, you will have made a dent in that company mm -hmm. in a positive way. Uh, right now, does it feel like that? Because there's, you know, kind of physics, you know, for every action, there's an equal positive reaction. Right now, there's a reaction to what you did as someone who's the first one to do that. But it's now happened. And in a, in a way yeah. where I think over time, um, people will be more aware of it. So again, just feel good about doing that. And, right. um, and it's, you know, unfortunate that you had to leave, but probably smart that you didn't, you know, continue to put yourself yeah. in that environment. And I mean, it sucks that you were, I mean, I can't imagine what it's like. I mean, again, I don't know, like, man, it sucks to be, <laughs> I mean, cause I, it's weird. Cause I'm a, I am a super flirtatious person. I am. And I don't like ever worry about being flirtatious and I've never been criticized for being flirt <laughs> like, in a like, Oh, Nick, don't be too, you, you asked for it. It's mm -hmm. just like, I'm just, you know, and yeah. I, man. I, well, that's you know. the thing. And there, there are those lines where you can kind of, uh, when you can joke around and you, and you have, you can tell the difference when someone is joking and you're having a really good time because everyone is nice and people have that comfortableness with each other, but it becomes very different very quickly. And you can tell when it's yeah. more sinister than just a joke um, and that's where that line is and I think that's where a lot of people don't understand the line and that's probably if you don't get where that line is and you're going to go and kind of well that's the thing too it's um and there's it, you know, the workplace is also a very different you know yeah like again it was funny because I was I didn't tell the story but I was recently at in a I was doing a fitting and I just um, you know, the turn of my clothes and I said goodbye. And I met the, the stylist and I like patted her on the shoulder and I was like, Oh, thank you very much. And I left and I actually thought to myself, Did I pat her too many times? Like, I literally, <laughs> seriously, it was like, I don't, you know, like, was I, you know, like the hug, the awkward hug that, you know, like I'm, I'm, mm -hmm. uh, you know, as a guy, I'm, I'm constantly be like, I literally thought about like, well, I, I'm, I'm sure it's fine, but like, did I, cause like, Oh, thank you, you know, like, right. But in the workplace, I think it's, we need to, you know, in the world, I think we can, there's a balance of being sure. flirtatious, but in the workplace, you, there's no place for it. It's, it's about work. Mm -hmm. You know, there shouldn't, you wish it to, we should all kind of tone down our jokes and our advances. And, you know, 
I, I remember joking, you know, like I had a, I had a gay boss one time and he would always like, and when I was in my twenties and like, he'd be like, well, no Ash looked that good in jeans. I remember like, I didn't care. I was just like, I thought it was funny. It was like, I was complimenting me, but like also that wasn't appropriate, you know, yeah. at the time. Um, and so we can't, we shouldn't, none of us should do those things because it is, it is mm -hmm. work. And I think it's okay to have a zero tolerance policy in the workplace because it's about work and mm -hmm. it's different than being yeah. flirtatious at yeah. a bar and things like that. So, well, and especially in spaces like where, where Nadia is working and where Liz works, where, you know, professional men's sports yeah. is kind of like the final frontier. It's a good old boys club for sure. <laughs> it really is. Yeah. And, and it's the last sort of space that uh, women are still figuring out how to to work in and be a part of. Yeah. And yeah. unfortunately, there are going to be growing pains when women get positions of power in that space. But um, I think it, it will only make it safer and better for everyone when it's safer yeah. and better for women. Yeah, for sure. Right. Again, I think yeah. we just we'd have to continue the conversation. But good um, for you for being for being brave. Because also, I'm sure what happened to you was not an isolated incident with that person, right. even. So right. maybe you prevented someone else from getting harassed or assaulted or accosted or whatever. You know what I mean? Like yeah. so I, yeah, I, that's hate, right. I, I think the way he did it, he knew what he was doing in a way. So oh, I think yeah. he he definitely had before. So yeah, I, whether I was the first or one along the line, I don't yeah, know. But. For sure. But I do hopefully, you know, I don't know how it is in the UK. I do sense that, you know, companies are making a conscious effort yeah. to be more aware and recognize mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. and protect women who do come forward. Um, so I, I hope that, you know, I hope that that continues to happen. So the women listening, if you are going through this situation, um, don't feel like you know, don't be worried. I mean, unfortunately, I think we have to be sensitive and mindful and you need to think about it, you know, how you want to approach it. Unfortunately, maybe talk to someone that you trust first. You know, I don't get some counsel from people. Mm -hmm. You know, it's unfortunate and that you HR have to say that. And HR is not always your friend, right? That's, yeah. That's and something so, important to know. HR get to know the landscape of your company. And you know? also the laws. So uh, one of the episodes that I did on the Enthusiasm Enthusiast was about uh, this, uh, this, this, website that went up called betterbrave.com. And uh, it basically helps people navigate um, sexual harassment in, and you can go to like where it, it's not in the UK yet, unfortunately, but you can go to, you know, California or Texas and find out what the laws are so that you can know, oh, actually in this situation, if I go to HR, I'm going to, I'm going to hurt myself rather than going to a pro bono lawyer in the first place. Yeah. So there, yeah. there are so many more resources out there. That's a good point. Yeah, so lawyer up. Yeah. Brittany, how are you? I'm Nick. This is Katie. Hey, Brittany. Hi, guys. I'm good. What is your uh, question or story you would like to share with us? Oh, well, I've had some updates since I um, sent an email. So Great. I, don't, I, don't I will just start from the beginning. Um, so I have a friend that I met through my ex. Um, they were good friends. They worked together. Um, once we broke up, he and I became good friends. He's friends with a lot of my mutual friends, so on, so on. So we've been friends since like 2011. Um, when me and my ex split up in 2016, we started spending more time together. And it was like totally cool, just friends. And then one night we ended up hooking up okay so we have been on this path of us pretty much hooking up since 2016 it's like three and years. we will go yeah. through these phases where we spend a lot of time together and we're not necessarily hooking up all the time and it's like sleepovers and dinners and i'm totally cool with us just hooking up but i get really confused because he makes comments a lot where he says we're gonna fall in love and I have no idea what that means. And I will ask him, I'm like, why are you saying that? How old are but you? But he won't Brittany? answer me. Brittany, how old are you? What was that? How old are you? I'm about to be 28. How old is he? 29. Okay. Okay. So you're adults. Wait, I want to hear the answer. Yeah. One. When, when, um, when, you, when he says we're going to fall in love and you say, why do you say that? What does he say? He ignores me. Oh, he has an answer. 
usually just kisses me and then like mm -hmm. we just keep on keeping on. In your perfect situation, Brittany, if you're like in six months, this is where I'm going to be at either with or without him. What's your dream scenario? With or without him? I mean, what's I your... just want to figure out what we're doing, I guess. No, more than figuring out, what's your, what's your dream scenario? <sighs> if we could, if he could stop fucking around and like be committed, I would like that. All right. So I, yes, I feel, I agree with you. Right. I think that's what you want. Yeah. You're not okay with your current relationship. I think step one, admit to yourself and anyone who asks, including him, that you're not okay with the current situation. And you haven't been okay with what you guys have been doing for the past three years, because that's kind of, that's, okay. you should feel okay with it saying that why you're so passive about it and you're so afraid to like not be okay with something that you're entitled to not be okay with is i think step one mm -hmm. um okay hold you hold yourself yeah, more accountable and then therefore make him more accountable and you're just gonna have to be okay and less afraid of the fact that he's not your guy He's probably not. Right. And, but I will yeah. say, in defense to him, not that I'm trying to defend him, but you, again, you have to hold yourself accountable to hold him accountable. It's that whole, like, thing. You give him an inch, he'll take a foot. You're like, you know, you're not, he's, he's getting away with it, and you're letting him. And until you stop letting him, he's not going to say shit. And for this whole, like, we're going to fall in love someday, I don't know what he yeah. really means. It might just yeah. be a line to, like, bide his time. But, like, you yeah. haven't made him commit. And therefore, he's not going to commit. And the chances are there's a reason why he's not committing because he wants some freedom, whatever that means. I'm not implying right. that maybe he's doing some shit, but he's probably doing some shit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, here's the thing. I know him like, okay, so a little bit more on the backstory. Like we've both casually dated other people throughout this entire time. Fine. So that's fine, right? Like I do I, my thing, he does his thing. If you want to, sure. Maybe it is just like a good arrangement. But last week he had a conversation with my best friend I don't even really know how the topic came about, but he said something along the lines of, I think she has feelings for me. And she said, was it mutual? And he said, well, yeah. But then tell he you. was like, let's change then the he subject. he needs to tell you. Yeah, but to be honest, not to, I'm going to be direct yeah. here. And I apologize if it sounds harsh, but you guys aren't 18 and 19. You're 29 and 28. You're like, your guys are acting like a couple of teenagers. A lot of he said, she yeah. said, and talking to friends and blah, talking blah, blah, around blah. blah. It. Talking mm -hmm. around it. Thank you, Rochelle. Like, you're an adult and you don't, you're, you know, you, you act like an adult, expect him to be an adult. And at this, some point, just be like, do you want to make this a thing or not? Because nothing's going to change unless you like nip it in the bud, so to speak. And you start setting first expectations for what you want and start admitting to yourself, what do I want from this situation? And then when you figure that out, cause I think we have, then you start <laughs> yeah. holding him accountable to that. And if he doesn't meet up to those expectations, you let it go. Because all you're doing right now is having someone around to bide your time because the alternative is you maybe being bored for a little bit while you find someone else. Right. And you're afraid of True. being bored. So, yeah. you know, maybe he's your guy, but right now you have to figure out whether he is and if is he doing this because you're letting him get away with it or he just doesn't want to commit to you. And I honestly don't know the answer to that because you haven't, you haven't, held yourself or him accountable for what you want to get out of this. True. No, that's right. I mean, I need to, I need to just, I guess I've been scared to ask because yes. I don't want to ruin our friendship and yeah. I don't want it to be one of those things where I ask, you know what? And then all the good parts of us being friends are, that's, is just gone. That's it's, honest and good for you to admit yeah. that, but you have to be afraid to, and to also lose your friendship has changed. It, it, it's true. It's changed. It's gone through yeah. a dynamic. It's, your friendship is also has like a whole part of it that's now based on hooking up. Right. So, you know, I, I, I had almost an exact similar situation where I started dating. Uh, I started hanging out with an ex's friend and then we started hooking up and then and we were best friends, quote unquote. And I was always terrified to say because he would say very similar things. He would say things like. Uh, we shouldn't do this because I love you so much and we really shouldn't do this anymore. And all I could hear was, I love you so much. Yeah. And I was ignoring the part that was saying, we really shouldn't do this it's because I was, yeah. so yeah. I was so terrified. I was so terrified to say, hey, this is what I really want from you and this is what I really need. And I, because I knew in my heart, he was not gonna give that to me because if he had wanted to give that to me, he just would have. Yeah, also too, 
there's a chance he might not be your guy. Yeah. And at your, at this point in your life, like you're not, again, you're not 18. So like you, when you're 18, yeah. you don't worry about who's your guy. You're just like figuring it all out, yeah. but you're not that age. And it's, you're no. at the age where maybe you want to maybe meet your person. And chances are, if he's not your person, you won't be friends. Your, your person won't be okay with this guy being around. So, you know, don't be afraid about losing the friendship if yes. he's not your guy, because yeah. like someone else That's will true. be your That's best friend. That's a good friend. point. Yeah. So, and a real friend won't do this to you. Exactly. Sure, but at the same time, I think she needs to help. Like, I think it's on her too. Well, that's what I'm saying. Like, hold yourself to a high standard yes. and have real friends. Yeah. And if it's a relationship, yeah, don't be afraid to define a relationship in your own terms. We're just hooking up. We're just doing this. But it doesn't sound like that's what she wants. Yeah. So have good friends, have a boyfriend, have a hookup. But it's muddled to her. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Hopefully yep. that was helpful. Yeah, that actually was super helpful. So, all right. Well, thank you yeah. very much, Brittany. Good luck. Good luck, Brittany. You're going to be great. Thanks, guys. All right. You're awesome. Hi. How are you? Hi. Good. How are you? I'm good. I'm Nick. This is Katie. Hi. How are you? What Hi. is your name? I'm Shelby. How can we help? All right. So, um, I travel 100% of the time for my job and I go around, I help hotels. So, my assignments range anywhere from two weeks to two months. And I only get home about once every two months and I'm only home for about 48 hours, sometimes even less. Okay. So this while I love my job. It makes dating obviously extremely difficult. Um, cause the guys that like are okay with my lifestyle are usually the guys that are just looking for like a one night stand type of thing. And the guys that are like not okay with my lifestyle are usually the ones that like would be better for dating, but once they get past like one visit after going back to see the guy, they're usually like, when can I see you next? And I'm like, Oh, I don't know. We'll have to see how my schedule plays out. And sure. then they're like, okay, I'm done with this. Okay. So I'm not going to give up my, this is my dream job. I'm not giving it up for dating, but like, do you have any advice for dating in my situation or do I just have to own the fact that I'm going to have to be single as long as I'm doing this? Well, I don't think it has to be that extreme in terms of, um, being single, but the reality is, uh, I mean, if you want to, if, if you're career driven, which is great. And if this is your dream yeah. job, that's amazing. Most people aren't lucky enough to find or have ever get a dream job. Yeah. yeah. And sometimes great things come with sacrifice, you know? Yeah, sure. And I think when it comes to your dating life, you are just going to have to be more patient than the average person. And I think that's right. okay. Um, I think a couple things that come to mind you certainly can run the risk of settling in a relationship because you might get yeah. discouraged at time with your dating life or feel bouts of loneliness or meeting the wrong guy. And I think you'll just have to challenge yourself to stick to your guns in terms of what you really want. Um, yeah. And it may just take an exceptionally uh, unique person who uh, is your person. And maybe, the, and they, and the, again, I, I can, being redundant, and sometimes I said this last, last week on the podcast, Listen, we're only going to find one person who hopefully our relationships don't work out. So that should, by definition, right. be unique and just might be harder for you to find. And so just be patient, <laughs> right. but don't get discouraged because, you know, regardless if it's your your job that you travel 100% of the time, I don't travel 100% of the time and I still haven't found my person. So like, you know, <laughs> right, right, right. Um, so there you go. Um <laughs> I, so I, you know, there's no right or wrong answer, right? I can't sit there and tell you you should quit your job. Other people might prioritize careers less and that's also okay. Right. <clears throat> Some people aren't as career driven. That's fine. You know? Um, but I, I, if you are career driven, I think that's great. I don't think you should give that up. Um, you know, I don't know how old you are. How old are you? seem young enough. Um, about 27. You're 27. So you're, you're young, you have plenty of time. Like, yeah. you don't need to press the panic button. Yeah. Um, Plenty of guys out there. There's very few dream jobs out there. You don't want to um, quit your dream job for some yeah, guy. Yeah, no, who, that's definitely You end up getting sick of in a year that. anyways. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, so yeah, I don't know if Katie have anything to add, but um, yeah, be patient and congratulations for finding your dream job. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, thank you. I'm so proud of you, first of all. That's really thank exciting. You. I think you need a real adult like you need a person who has their own yeah, stuff sure. that's going on that is not sitting around like obsessing and waiting for you to come back. So you need you need yeah. a, a guy with 
that either is very career driven himself or maybe, you know, already has a family or something like that, like that, that, that motivates him so that when you meet up and you are together, you're really um, loving, valuing, and appreciating your time together because you're two adults who decided to right. spend time together mm-hmm. rather than two people clinging to a life raft, you know, like as like, uh. But I do want to clarify, I don't want to necessarily <laughs> right. generalize as adults because there are adults out there and it's okay who spending a lot of time with oh, each other sure. is a priority yes, and that's yes, also okay yes, yes. it's a personal preference yeah. right but mm-hmm. like to, to, you know you just have to find someone who yeah. has it's again it's whether like do we what's the right amount of sex to have what's the right amount of time to spend that's all personal preference and e- men and yeah. women right. all ha- you just have to find someone who it aligns with you yeah and you just have right. to be conscious and and cognizant of not trying to force it with people who don't have the same priorities as you. And you and, have to yeah, be exactly. okay with saying, listen, you're great and you're nice, but and we have good chemistry, but this isn't going to work because this is a prior, like my job is a, a priority to me. And I understand that I can't give you what you need and you have to n- be mindful of not wasting time with guys that just aren't fitting into your life. Right. And also, I, yeah, think, sure. I think the guy that's like, super excited for you about what you do and like supportive of you because there are a lot of men who in theory want a strong, motivated, powerful woman. And then when it comes down to it, it's like, oh, but why is she gone? And why, you know, it's like, well, the reality of a strong, motivated, powerful, career conscious woman is that sometimes her attention is going to be diverted. And are they going to be cool with having her attention diverted? You know what I mean? So it, yeah. it, 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 like, like Nick said, it's a particular personality. And so it's like, I think some of that you'll be able to suss out really early on whether they yeah, no, definitely. really are cool with it. Awesome. Definitely. Well, again, I just want to reiterate, you have your dream job. Yeah. You should be very excited yeah. about that. Yeah. <laughs> um, Freeze your eggs. <laughs> no, I'm That's not saying, an you're only 27. No, like, no, 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 I'm saying yeah. if I, most women who are 40 who did not do that and have a job where they make great money and they don't think about it when they're in their 20s. And I want you to be able to hit the gas on your job as long as you want and do this as long as you want. And then I want you to have the option when you're ready and not mm-hmm. not feel so so just putting it out there only if you want kids only if you yeah. want kids I mean, and if you if you're a there. person who is avowed that you don't want kids then you know live your life girl <laughs> awesome well um Katie I do want to thank you for for coming i think this has been a lot of fun hopefully enlightening i do have one more question uh, about playing devil's advocate i know prior to uh this this uh, podcast, uh, you made a comment about guys playing devil advocate. Yeah, I do it a lot. Um, <laughs> I don't heard. necessarily think it's a bad thing. I do sometimes think in relationships I can play devil's advocate to a fault. Um, <laughs> but you seem to have a strong opinion about uh, that. And dating. Right. What is it? I'm curious. Um, I, I especially when it comes to someone um, sharing their experience or uh, something that is particular to their experience, I find that it's really challenging when guys especially play devil's advocate because it's so hard to get guys on our team in the first place, like mm-hmm. to get to a place like, you know, we've, we've had conversations now where I feel like um, we understand each other a little bit more, right? Mm-hmm. And so... I, and some of that had to happen through like sharing, sharing personal stuff, sharing experiences, sharing points of view. So it's like, oh, we worked so hard to like get on the same page and playing devil's advocate is always about, well, I really agree with you, but I want to argue this point that disagrees with you just to prove the point. So are you talking it's about, exhausting. well, so like I get, I, I totally get it when it's especially a, a personal experience, like this happened, this is how I feel about it, this happened to me. And it. And I definitely could work on this, especially in relationships where if my goal is to play devil's advocate because I'm trying to understand or help, I could probably go about it in a better way. Yeah. Um, especially, and if I'm not in a relationship, it's just dating, I could I totally recognize how playing devil's advocate can be counterproductive, especially someone sharing a personal experience. What about someone just talking about things in generalities? 
about I believe this or I think this or just having a, a discussion about a topic. Right. And then someone, I guess, because sometimes it's not necessarily for me playing devil's advocate. It's me saying, I don't, I honestly don't know. I'm trying to understand. And I see some of your points, but I don't know if I see uh, others. Here's another way to look at it. it. What is your point of view on this? Right. You know, and that's will be my motivation for quote unquote playing devil's advocate because there are, you know, that I sometimes get frustrated with people's unwillingness to consider the other side, whatever you think of, because I think, especially nowadays, we are all like stuck in our lanes where we become very de de decisive, divisive, uh, divisive whatever, mm -hmm. and our beliefs, and we have stopped listening to the other side. And so we've, we've, we're going down, we're just, be, we're getting further away from each other rather than closer together. And whether it's devil advocacy or, or, or what, I just feel like, I, you know, again, from when I'm trying, when I'm playing devil's advocate, I'm trying to learn. I maybe could go about a different way, but I definitely appreciate like if someone's personal story, mm -hmm. like if a girlfriend's like, this happened to me at work or whatever, whatever the story is, maybe it's nothing like, you know, super intense, but just, li I, I could be a better listener. <laughs> probably. <laughs> just be like, I'll just shut up and listen, you know, and tell me, just vent. Yeah. But what do you think about like in general? Well, I think there's, I think. I think there's a, a difference in humility when you come to someone and say, I, I really don't understand X, Y, Z. Will you, will you help me? There's a humility in that, right? There's a humbleness in saying, I don't really have all the answers and I don't understand all the points of view, but I'm willing to learn and I'm willing to listen. As a feminist, are you okay with saying, well, listen, I have my conservative points of view. Maybe it's faith-based or whatever it is, sure. but I definitely believe in the equality of women and, and you know, like uh, having openness and conversations about sex or in the workplace that we've talked about and support all that. But there's maybe things about, you know, other things that they're not there yet. Are, right. Is that okay? Are, 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 are we still interested in, in, in including those people in these conversations about equality? Being, in, being inclusive means bringing people in. And we're not going to always agree. Like, we're not going to be in the same place. But we can key into different things. So, like, being sex positive is a really easy way for you to key into feminism sure. because it just comes so naturally to you. And also, even though your mom is conservative, Phyllis is conservative— their their life explained feminism. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah, and that's kind of why I'm interested life. in it because yeah. of, and that's kind of the general concept I hope to have in this episode is, it's not so much the word feminism or whatever, but like, again, the equality of bringing people in right. and the, the, some of the tenets that come with right. feminism. Like um, I would have We don't loved, have to get bogged down in every little detail of it. Right. So. And I would have loved for your mom to have felt like she had more choices, but I would never shame her for the choices she made. And I would celebrate the choices she made. You yeah. know what I mean? I think yeah, you could be a housewife and a feminist all at the same and time. And I am. I yeah. am those stay-at-home mom, you know. Absolutely. I mean, there is um, space for all of that. Cool. Yeah. Well, thank you so much again. I um I think this was a, a fun episode. I hope the people who <laughs> are still listening to it have have <laughs> Have listened Thank along. You. I don't know. I'm really kind of like nervous about like what the response will be. Uh, we'd love your feedback. Uh, I hope to have more interesting episodes and conversations like this. So Katie, thank you so much for being a part of it. I know we didn't talk about uh, The Bachelor today. Uh, quite honestly, we filmed this before the episode. I didn't get an early copy. Colton's still finding love. Uh, we'll dive back love. into it. Uh, yeah. I'm sure next week. But again, thank you so much. Thank uh, you. Thanks guys for listening. Uh, don't forget to rate us, sending your questions. Um, oh, and you can be a bachelor fan and a feminist. By right. That. Also. Yeah. Right. Yes. Um, natural habits, essential oils, people, nhoils.com, 20% off, uh, make it natural. I won't bog you down with the ad, but if you want to feel better, help with your anxiety, headaches, mental, emotional, and physical well-being, essential oils has been helpful for me. Try it out. Naturalhabits.com. Or actually <laughs> natural habits on Instagram, nhoils.com. Thanks for listening guys. See you next week. Thanks, Nick. All right, bye-bye. <laughs>